Good morning, everybody. And I am in Happy Sunday, Sunday, April 24th, 2022. I got Princess Hannah here. I'm not sure what she's slicking her. She likes to chew her own toenails. <laughs> I mean, I can trim them, but she prefers to trim them herself. I have never had a dog that chews her toenails before and gets them to the right length, her length. Makes it a lot easier on me because with Rottweilers with their black toenails, sometimes it's hard to be, you know, you got to be careful and you can only do little bits at a time because you don't want them to start bleeding, but she does it herself. So, so I'm going to read two out of Love Language Minutes since I've got some catch up and catching up to do. I just spent the rest of yesterday napping and, and medicating myself because my neck is so giving me some massive pain in my head and my neck and straight down my back so in fact hold that thought I'm going to <laughs> grab my heating pad out and get that started on my back again that does help a ton then I'll put it on my shoulders in a little bit but it's amazing the difference and when he says you have got to keep your stuff heated up because it's going to help keep the mobility going he was right. Overnight, no heat. I turned it off and I woke up and I'm like, I can barely move. So that's not fun. So the first devotion is for yesterday and it's entitled Accepting Responsibility. We are each responsible for our own conduct. Galatians 6 verse 5. Why are we so quick to blame our loved one? When things aren't going well in our relationship. Unfortunately, it's human nature. Going, going all the way back to Adam and Eve. See Genesis 3 for some blatant blame shifting between the two of them. But Galatians 6 verse 5 reminds us that each of us is responsible for our own choices and behavior. And that includes our part in a relationship. May I suggest a better approach? Try the following steps. Can't wait to see what they are. I may have to adjust them, but we'll see. <laughs> hey, everybody's got their own opinion, so why wouldn't I add mine? I realize that marriage is not what it should be. Marriage is... Uh, is, is about two becoming one with him. So, I don't know what his definition of marriage is, but that's my definition of marriage. Two becoming one with him at the center. Because you can't have a union of two into one without him. How many marriages have been through? And how many of them hit him first? Assess your own relationships. Okay, let's look at number two. I stop blaming my mate and ask God to show me where I am at fault. I stop blaming my mate and ask God to show me where I am at fault. Who cares? Who cares who's at fault? How about your curvy tongue? And you, and you, you communicate with one another without letting the enemy get in between you because that's what's doing it. Let's see what the next one is. I confess my sin and accept God's forgiveness according to 1 First John 1 verse 9 three, three, three. Well, that'd be good advice. Confess your sins and accept God's forgiveness, but You can't confess your sins and accept his forgiveness and continue to keep sinning and going on with your wicked ways. That's not that's not getting your brownie points from him, just so you know. I ask God to fill me with his spirit. Now here's a good one. And give me the power to make constructive changes in my life. Now that 
is a great, great advice, very great advice. But again, if you start with him and then you form your relationships after you're on board with him, well, the rest of everything is easy street. Well, not completely easy street because it's going to be like this and you're going to have your smooth sailing days. I go to my mate, confess my failures, and ask forgiveness. How about I go to my mate and communicate my thoughts and together form forgiveness. In God's power, I go on to change my behavior, words, and attitudes according to the principle, principles that I discover in Scripture. True that. This is God plan, God's plan, and it works. Blaming your spouse stimulates resentment and antagonism. That's the enemy when that comes in. Admitting your own, here we go again. How about admitting your own cho choices and letting God change your behavior? I'm not even going to say failures anymore because I'm over that word and I'm going to change it in this book. Choices. Failures. I'm over that word. Admitting your own choices and letting God change your behavior creates a new and positive climate in your marriage. It is the road to a growing marriage. Father, you know how easily I slip into blaming my spouse for the things that are wrong in our relationship. Please forgive me. Help me instead to take full responsibility for my own choices. There we go. The next, the word in here was wrongs. Show me clearly where I have failed. How about made choices and help me to change? I know I could do it only in your power. See how you change one word and it can change the whole tone. I'm not sure how many times failure was used in this little devotion that's supposed to be uplifting. But how about you change those failures into choices? Just because you made a choice doesn't mean it's a failure. We learn from our choices. And sometimes they, they work. And sometimes they don't. But maybe if you fuel your choices with what would Jesus would do, maybe the outcome would be a lot more positive. I don't know. That's my two cents worth. So we're going to move on to today's devotion. April 24th, 2022. Dealing with yourself first. And you know, that's what I've been doing for the last two years because I had to take care of my own self. My medical nightmare I've been in. That was beyond the test. And look what I did with my test that I was given. I kept making his land beautiful no matter where I was, no matter how I felt. Made every place I could be the Garden of Eden. And where I'm at now is no different than any place else I've ever been. So dealing with yourself first for today. Why worry 
about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Matthew 7 verses 3 through 5. In the past few devotions, we have discussed taking responsibility for your own choices, not failures, rather than blaming your spouse, our spouse. I do not mean that we should never discuss the faults of our mate, choices. As a couple, we are trying to learn how to work together as a team. Well, again, how was your relationship formed? Was it formed on God's principles? Or was it formed on sin? Because if it was formed on sin, it's time for you to start having your come to Jesus meeting and repenting starting today. Now, if your relationship was built on God, but somewhere man and all the outside nonsense has polluted your beautiful union, then you need to get that out of your house. You need a clean house. And you get your house in order. And I'm not talking about sweeping up the dust. I'm talking about getting everybody on board With that beautiful love letter he left us. Oh, here it is. Of course, it's in my lap. This means that if I think my spouse is treating me unfairly, I should, in love, share my feelings. It's amazing when you use your emotions in truth how your spouse will respond with love and kindness try it pour out your true emotions don't hold anything back but that's only appropriate after I have first dealt with my own choices Really? Another failure? And this is supposed to be uplifting. This is what Jesus taught in the verses above from Matthew 7. When we cast blame on our mate without first examining ourselves, we're likely not seeing past our own faults. As a result, it becomes impossible to see the pro problem clearly. That hurts my head. That's not true. When you point the finger, you got four back at yourself. Well, maybe three. Because this one's still pointing forward, at least on mine. I don't know how you point. One's pointing down. <laughs> Never really looked at that. But when you point the finger for us, point back at you. So, step in front of the mirror first. Do a video of yourself. And then rewatch it. And see if you like the person that you've become. And if you don't like that person, then start talking to him. Start confessing your sins to him for forgiveness. And then, only then, shall you sit down and have a long discussion with your spouse about the choices you both have made to both contribute 
to the destruction in your marriage or the hiccups. When did marriage become disposable? I've never felt that ever in my life. Never ever. And it it's very upsetting to witness. Constantly. Whenever a relationship breaks down, both people are part of the breakdown. One might bear more responsibility than the other, but but either can move to restore the relationship. We must each deal with the wrong we personally bear. Again, we must each deal with the choices we personally bear because our choices we wear on our sleeve. It's all about interpretation. Be willing to take the first step. Don't sit around pointing the finger at your spouse. And don't waste time waiting for him or her to confess. Take the bull by the horns. And sit down rationally at the table. And do it in Thanksgiving. Approach it like Jesus would do. And if you need a point of reference, watch the movie, What Would Jesus Do? Or The War Room. Those are both great tools to help your relationship grow in the right direction. If you honestly confess your part, that may be the stimulus that triggers confession on the part of your mate. What do you got to do to lose? But to try in a little bit of your time. The first step is the most important one. And that's him. Growling him in your life. Look at mine. I came here on a wing and a prayer. And had enough portion of the money to stay in this resort. My girlfriend Peppermint Patty brought a home run and offered it up without me asking. Let me help you with this room. He led me here to this resort for a reason. I've been home ever since I've arrived in the Florida Keys. I've never felt so much as peace. That was my first step in helping heal the world in my own loving way the way that I've always tried to heal this world with my loving heart. Father, I pray for the humility and courage to take the first step. Help me to see the choices I have contributed to a situation and confess that without waiting for my spouse to act first. Please bless our efforts. Now by one, two, three, four, I, I replaced failures, wrongs, is that the only words, with the word choices. It's not as abrasive to use the word choices. Failures has such a dark undertone. Everybody wants to win. So why don't you win with your beautiful husband or bride? And why don't you rekindle the day that you met, the day you fell in love, and the day you were asked to be married, accepted, and then said those beautiful vows. It's about time 
you go back, back to the foundation of where you started. That would be the best advice I could give any couple on earth. Because any time I've asked a couple whether they've been sitting at a restaurant not discussing anything with each other on their cell phones until their food arrives and then not speaking to one another and I walk up to them and go how long have you guys known each other when I realize they're married when did you meet and fall in love and at that point in time when I have done that my own little exercise in this world the phones are put down they eat their meal together and they start communicating. Their phones no longer matter. I can't tell you how many times I've done that with couples throughout my life because I frankly can't watch it without saying something. And it was the only way that I could find in my heart of hearts of how to reprogram this brainwashed world from the deception and the evil that is attempting to take over it by rekindling that flame that ignited when the two met is the greatest gift on my end to ever witness. Paul Thomas was a great one with that when he told me about the way the two of them met. That little laundry turd. Love him to death. Love him to pieces. Why do you say love him to death? Love him to pieces. All his honoriness and everything. And you know why? Because he says it like it is. Sometimes it's not the most appropriate way of saying things, but you know what? He didn't hold back. He didn't hold back at all. That's what's so fun about him. So, review your choices with your spouse. And if your spouse has made some choices that haven't sat well with you. Don't put up your dukes. Take off the gloves. Sit down at the table and discuss how those choices affected your life, your family's life, your children's life, and others around you. If there is one thing that I have learned in this world is your choices dictate your past, present, and future. It's not anybody else's choices. It's your own. So if you choose to stay in an abusive relationship without doing anything about it and succumbing to it and being a mouse, not using your voice, fueled by him, not fueled by anger. You'll be amazed at the outcome. God, family, I put in health. God heals. God heals. I'm living proof. Zero. Pharmaceuticals. Zero. Just saying. I take his medicine. He provided it to us. 
And the government knew all about it. And that's why they made it illegal. Because they couldn't make any money with God's medicine. Because it grows everywhere. Freely. So what do they do? Police it. Look for it. Destroy it. But guess what? It keeps growing. <laughs> Confiscate it. Use it for their own personal benefits. Whatever they choose to do with it. That's what man did. Something that is good for us. Carly's taken a huge turn for the good. I've never seen anything like it. She has found nutritious dietary needs in the soil here on this land. And all of a sudden, she's put on some weight. She's not so thin anymore. She's starting to look like Hannah. She's starting to get stronger. It's unbelievable when you fully surrender the path he takes you on. So, think about your choices and how they affect others and undo some of the damage that you've done. Start today. Don't put off tomorrow, but you can do today. So, stay tuned. I have more coming up. Love to all bunches and bunches. Bye.